Can we cut suffering at its root? It's only through mindfulness and meditation practice that we come to realize that the only time we suffer emotionally is when we unknowingly or subconsciously attach a sense of personal ownership to any of our thoughts, beliefs, ideas, people, places, and things. We are directly responsible for any emotional pain we experience in our life, no one else. We must hold ourselves accountable. And if we truly wish to put an end to the suffering, then we must cut it directly at the source. Our sense of personhood, also known as the little self or the ego, doesn't like change. It likes things just the way they are. Even if the way things are, aren't really even that great. So whenever any thought, belief, opinion, people, place, or thing are somehow threatened or appears that they might fade, change, break, or completely disappear, we sort of freak out on the inside and kind of end up feeling that our existence is also somehow being threatened. And as a consequence, we emotionally react. Everything that we struggle with in life is directly attached to our sense of personhood or ego, but only by a thin thread of thought and belief. Through mindfulness and meditation practice, we bring the necessary loving kindness and awareness to cut that thin thread. We sever suffering directly at its root. I encourage you, please go ahead, snip the thread of attachment that ties you to your perceived sense of personal and egoic self, and you will be liberated from all needless suffering. Indeed, to experience true freedom, we must smash the personal self on the rocks of truth. We must crush the very idea of who we, be who we believe ourselves to be. Now, only through mindfulness and self-inquiry meditation practice do we learn to question every single belief, every idea, every opinion that we have of ourselves. And with loving, childlike curiosity, this is the key. Contemplate, what ideas do you cling to about who you believe yourself to be? Be honest with yourself. What is true? What is false? One by one, reveal them all as the counterfeits they truly are. Realize for yourself that none of these thoughts actually define you or your true nature. Be ruthless in your quest for the absolute truth. Raise a ruckus and annihilate all that is untrue within you, thought by thought, belief by belief. Words are empty. They are not the truth of our true nature. Our true nature is not any of the attachments to which we cling to. And this includes all of our personal memories, our knowledge, education, history, beliefs, talents, or beauty. Please realize the true you is both before and beyond any such labels and things. Witness the ego for what it is. It is the keeper of lies, the keeper of illusions, delusions, and the perpetrator of mistruths. Pay no mind, no attention to any and every perception of yourself that is fabricated or imagined by a mind that is both desperate and fearful to, def to define itself. You are beyond definition. You are infinite. Your only limit is the scope of your beliefs. What you cling to, what causes you pain, is nothing other 
than your false sense of self. The personal identity which you've created over the course of your entire life. It is also the greatest lie your ego has ever told you. It should be realized that the ego is nothing but a dream. It is a creator of concepts only, who resides in a world of make-believe. It has no substance. It clings to things which are unreal. So drain the ego of everything which sustains itself, which is always the attention we give it and the attention we give to all of our belief in its fabrications. Take the wind out of its sails and realize your true nature, which is pure, present, and knowing awareness, here and now, consciousness itself. This is the no self self, which is that both before and beyond any opinion, empty of belief and free from any attachments of the ego or mind. When the ego is no longer idolized as the protector of yourself, but rather is exposed as the jailer, the one who keeps you confined within the walls of false imprisonment, only then, only then will you realize that the prison door is not only unlocked, but it's not even there. The door we visualize ourselves trapped behind does not even exist. It's a vapor cloud, just like the ego that created it. When we can be free from the emotional suffering we inflict upon ourselves, we must first destroy the false personal self that feels as if it is being continually hurt. We can be free from the emotional suffering that we inflict upon ourselves, but we must first destroy the false personal self that feels as if it is being continually hurt. When there's no longer a personal sense of self, of me or mine to protect, then there's no longer any suffering. Yes, there will be pain. That's unavoidable. But suffering, however, is a choice. Buddha himself said, pain is not an option, but suffering is. So I say, let go of that old dilapidated handrail and enjoy the thrill of riding the storm of our life. This body which has been fastened upon us is merely a vessel that blocks the you from merging back with universal I. The mind is an anchor tethering you to the shores of this world. Meditate and pray that a furious storm shall thrash you around and wash you back to my shoreless shore.